Hi everyone, my name is Steffi and I am going to be doing the bar and the bookcase tag. I was tagged by Jalen himself and Alex over at what page are you on um, right before I started filming this video. So I am excited to do this. I have to admit that finding books for these drinks or <laughs> prompts were kind of hard. Um, but it was fun either way. <laughs> the drink that I have chosen for this video is just a classic Moscow Mule and yeah, <laughs> um, it should be great. Uh, yeah, so let's just get started with the first prompt. It is an old fashioned, which is a historical fiction recommendation. I decided to go with Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. It is a war novel kind of based on Heller's time in the what was it in the U.S. Army Air Corps. The story is kind of jumbled. It's not linear and the kind of jumps back and forth in different times with different characters. There are a lot of like repeated punchlines and kind of like hints of what happened. It's mainly satire but it touches on some very disturbing and hard topics and somehow Heller is able to like have you chuckling at things that you necessarily wouldn't. He tries to turn the war or I guess like the people that are involved in the war and are trying to like go home to their families. He's trying to turn those situations into like a funny thing um which it's very hard. It's not like ha 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 like this is like super funny. It's very troubling. <laughs> um, but I just remember enjoying the book. I do want to mention that the funny things come from them being on like these army bases in certain countries, not necessarily how they treated the people because some of the people that they encounter um, at the in these countries, they, they do like horrible things to them. Yeah, so I just thought that the way that Heller portrays the characters um, and the being in the army itself was very interesting. So the next prompt is sidecar book with a strong supporting character. Honestly, I had a tough time with this one and ended up choosing My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyenkin Braithwaite. We follow Koride, who is a nurse, and her sister, who is like, just is supposed to be this like pretty woman who attracts men easily and kills them. Koride is then responsible to help her sister clean up these murders, um, just using what she knows of being in the hospital and her love for her sister. Even though her sister is technically a side character, she kind of runs the story. <laughs> because everything that Karede does relies on what her sister is doing. And things take a turn when Karede is soon having to protect someone who she considers probably a bit closer to her and doesn't want her sister involved with this person. Um, but yet, you know, Karede loves her sister and will do anything for her if it comes down to it. The next prompt is A Manhattan, a book set in New York. I chose Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger. I think that even though I don't remember what the where the first part of the story takes place because it's like two short stories in one. Um, and the first story is about Franny and she's kind of like having this conversation with her boyfriend and they're realizing that they really aren't working out. Um, I can't remember what the conversation is and I feel like I'm going to have to like reread this book because um, it's pretty short like I said. It's like 160 pages. Um, and then the second part is in Manhattan. I want to say like it's the Upper East or Upper West Side of Manhattan. And Franny is having a conversation with her brother Zoe and I guess Zoe's giving her advice and trying to like get her out of her depression and they're just having this long kind of like ranting story and I just remember like the characters being so pretentious. I don't even remember if that's like true but in my head I just remember their conversations just lasting too long like when they were each talking and um... Yeah, but other than that, the book takes place in New York. The next prompt is a Bloody Mary, a book that scared you slash messed you up. 
I had to choose The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. This is a story about a 16 year old boy named Frank and we just see his like daily routine of him um, either murdering someone he, at this point in his life he's killed three people and we know that right away but slowly through the book we see each murder and it, they're horrible they're actually so bad he tries to create murders that look like accidents and you can see exactly why someone would think it was an accident but it's n still disturbing in his day life he's either killing random animals or torturing wasps in this thing he's created called the wasp factory where he would try to get a wasp to fly into it and then they kind of like will land in a different area of this factory and die it could be like by electrocution or like other things um he just has these doors that the wasp might fly into and then the door would shut and they would just get tortured to death basically alongside this his dad has this room that Frank is not allowed to go in, he doesn't really know why, and he never really has an opportunity to go and look in that room. Um, and then he has an older brother who is locked away in a psychiatric hospital um, due to some kind of traumatic incident that happened to him when he was working, I guess he was going to be a doctor. Uh, and it kind of changed his whole outlook, and I think he started eating dogs, if I remember correctly. Um, yes, you're hearing this story, and you're probably like, what the hell are you talking about? Um, <laughs> yes, this book is really chaotic. Another storyline that's going through the entire book is at the beginning, we know that his brother has escaped from the psychiatric hospital, and he keeps making these cryptic phone calls to Frank and kind of like telling him that he's coming home and it just seems like it's going to end all badly. So Frank is preparing for his brother's arrival and oh my gosh, like this book had so many twists and turns. Um, I couldn't predict anything that was going to happen, honestly, not even the ending and the ending wraps up in like three pages and it's it's actually absurd. <laughs> I guess the reason why I said that this book messed me up, it's not even that the three deaths that happened, the, the situation that happens to his brother, I had to pause because that, oh my gosh, was the scariest imagery that I have ever seen in a book. The next prompt is an espresso martini book that kept you reading into the night. This one was kind of easy. It is Lies You Told Me by Camilla Way. Um, we are following Clara whose boyfriend has just disappeared and then his sister who had been missing for 20 years shows back up to help Clara find him. But with no explanation on why she's there and why she never showed up in the past 20 years when Luke her boyfriend, Claire's boyfriend, was obviously looking for her. Um, and then we just see all these, all these like twists and turns. It's like a messy book, but it's engaging. And there's just like a bunch of stuff unraveling as we like dive into this family's deep, dark secrets, basically. Another book that kept me up would be Conversations with Friends. It's not for like any of the reason that you would think. I was just, I think I was going through it and that book made me cry so much. I don't know why, because I feel like it's not an emotional book. Um, must have been my life. <laughs> and I read that book also into like 2 a.m. The next prompt is Sazerac, a book that left you disoriented. I had to choose Untold Night and Day by Bay Sua. If there's any book that's gonna leave you feeling disoriented, it's gonna be this one. It is translated from Korean and we follow Ayami and her boss on the last day of them working at this audio theater that is permanently closing and it's like a really hot day which is perfect for what this author decides to do. So basically Ayami and her boss are spending the night walking through looking for uh, I guess it's like a friend of Ayami named Yunmi if I'm not wrong, uni. And then in the day, Ayami is looking for a visiting poet that uni kind of like set her up to meet. Um, but with that said, there are like numerous storylines that are repeated, but like different 
parts of it are changed so it's like you're reading the same story in a different way by a different person in a different like I think country um, by a different perspective and you keep feeling like the story's happening over and over but it's a different story altogether and then it comes to the end and you're just like what the hell just happened and it's essentially a fever dream and the humidity of like what the weather in the book alongside like the storytelling just did a good job of like giving you that feeling of like when it's too hot and you feel like a bit delirious and just like all the feels of that I feel like this book did such a good job it's really short and I feel like I would recommend it to anyone <laughs> The next prompt on here is a Long Island Iced Tea, a book that is doing too much. Um, yeah, so for my 21st birthday, I actually had a Long Island Iced Tea alongside quite a few other drinks and oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that was an experience. Anyway, the book that I picked for the Long Island Iced Tea is Black Book by Matteo Ascaripur. I don't even know how to like wrap this book up because honestly there was so much going on um, and so much like conversations about different things happening all at once. But we follow Darren who is working at Starbucks and one day he's given the opportunity to work at this startup company that kind of provides assistance to people who need mental health help. Um, at any time I believe but they kind of match them to people who would work best with this person and this person who's helping them could exist anywhere in the world so Darren goes into this company not really knowing what to expect and didn't realize that he would be the only black person working there so you can kind of see where I'm going with this <laughs> um, and I have some like bullet points that I'll just read out and you could like kind of like take it as you will but I have white lives matter, reverse racism, racism in the workplace, being a token black person, racist language, losing yourself, doing good, white group against black people, which would be like white, like group, like an activist group, um, Clyde with like a bunch of eye rolling, um, modern day lynching and being behind in life. So I feel like these are like the main themes or like things that pop up in this book so I would say that this book reads like a self-help guide and I think that's what it's intended to do to try to like help black people be present or exist in these positions that are normally given to white people it's kind of a way to help them be like himself <laughs> and <laughs> I honestly those parts took me out but that's besides the point black buck kind of used history to build the story and related it lot related a lot of it back to that as well but yeah there is so much going on the storyline jumps like in a chaotic manner and i think it's because he's doing too much <laughs> like he this book is a debut novel and i don't know if we could have done with a shorter book and maybe a sequel or a longer book like I don't know where exactly this book stands it's not a bad book at all not in that sense but it is a lot to take in there's it's too much the next prompt here is a Negroni book with a love triangle I had exciting times by Nisha Dolan Lester by Raven Lalani but I ended up choosing his only wife by Peace at Somedi this is a story about a woman named Afi who is getting married to a man named Ellie Kim or at least agrees to marry him but doesn't realize that she will be competing with this other woman that his family is trying to separate from them. They want no association with this woman and we don't know why. Well we know the reasons that they've like said to Afi but Afi is kind of like strong-willed and she's willing to like get to the bottom of this because she wants her husband to be her husband and not someone else's like she doesn't want to share yeah I just thought that this was interesting because of Ellie Kim like he seems like a pretty kind man despite him being with two women at the same time 
but we don't really know like what exactly it is and obviously Afi's not gonna believe anything he says because he just looks like a cheater like somebody who's like doesn't really care for her um but yeah we do see like the story play out and I thought it was engaging it was fun I loved Afi I loved the things that she did her like I just liked her um as a person and yeah, I thought everyone in the story was there for a reason and played a part that was needed. And I enjoyed, yeah, I just enjoyed it. The next prompt is Bay Breeze, book with a light, chill, heartwarming vibes. This prompt was probably the most difficult one that I could have, like, <laughs> find a book for. Um, I actually went through my entire Goodreads and couldn't find any happy, lighthearted book that I felt would fit this prompt. Um, except for Clock Dance by Ann Tyler, which wouldn't be my top pick, but there wasn't nothing necessarily terrible about this book either. We follow Willa. She is in her 40s. Um, she's a widow. She's kind of like not really a part of her son's lives and she doesn't really know what to do with her life since she feels like everything that happened kind of happened outside of like her making these decisions including her marriage um but one day her son's ex-girlfriend calls and said that she had been shot and needs her help so willa flies down to her and kind of helps her as she heals from this like gunshot i think mainly why i chose this book is because it's full of hope and finding family where you wouldn't expect it alongside a community and i felt like that was heartwarming to me and also the only reason i picked it is because it was the only <laughs> um book that was heartwarming i apologize all my other books are depressing Okay, so now we have Dark and Stormy, a book that's dark, thrilling, and menacing. Bonus point if the setting matches. So I chose Such Small Hands by Andres Barba, and it is translated from Spanish. It is written in a lyrical prose, and we follow a seven-year-old girl named Marina, and she is going into this orphanage alongside like other seven-year-olds. The story alternate perspectives between Marina and the girls as a collective. So we will see like things happening from Marina's point and then we would switch to the next like chapter and it would be told by the girls. The girls destroy this doll that Marina shows up to the orphanage with and instead of like feeling defeated or like outnumbered by these girls like tag teaming on her with like the bullying, she decides to stand up to them and somehow gains power over them by having them pretend to be the doll each night like they each get a turn at being the doll and it ends with her turn i would say it's definitely thrilling i read it quick <laughs> um and i loved each part of it uh, i would also say it's kind of dark because them pretending to be a doll only happens at night and the Last prompt on here is a martini, so a classic recommendation, and I'm not gonna lie, I have not read that many classics that I would necessarily recommend, and I think the two that I'm going to mention here have widely been talked about, um, so I'm just gonna go right ahead and just mention them without any descriptions, um, which is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Yes, another Salinger recommendation. <laughs> um, and then the other one is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And I would say these are like my top two favorite books that are classics um, that I have read more than once. I think I've read The Great Gatsby like three times. I'm not saying like any of these works are like particularly the best things ever, but I do like enjoy them. And I would say that they are kind of comfort reads at this point because I've read them quite a few times. I suppose it's time for me to tag some people. Um, Jalen kind of covered everyone that I watch. So 
he literally covered everyone. Um, so I'm going to have to like think outside of the box here and go with some people that I think are also amazing that I guess don't really read literary fiction. I think Jalen tagged the ones that do and <laughs> like that's just our vibe. But I am going to tag Sunny over at a Sunny Book Nook. Obviously, they are amazing and have some of the best recommendations that I necessarily wouldn't like look at or even like think about picking up um and then i'm also going to tag carolyn she recently started a booktube channel not too long ago and her channel is honestly one of my favorites and i would also like to tag sage at sage reads they don't read similarly to me either but um i would still like to see what they come up with I would also like to tag Kylie over at Kylie NM <laughs> um, because she reads a lot of historical fiction and classics and stuff like that and I just want to see what she would recommend for these prompts. Um, those are the people that I want to mention. I can't think of any others at the top of my head, but if I do, I will leave them tagged below. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.